Hi everyone and welcome, I'm Jody. Thanks for joining me. I'm actually at Amara in Urbana, so I also work here as a yoga teacher. We're starting classes live on Monday, so if you're interested in coming into a studio, practicing live or accepting, I think up to 10 people in the studio, um, practicing safely, everyone wears a mask um, until you get to your yoga mat. So in addition to your practice here with me on Fridays at Craner, you can also come into the studio and we're also streaming um, these classes as well. So you can just stay home and continue to have the stream classes. But um, we're gonna come on to our backs here. So we're gonna do a heart opening. And I always like to have one block under the shoulder blades, reclining back, and then one block under the head. So we're not going for a deep stretch here so you can have the second block at that second highest height. I always find that if it's at that lower height, it's too much of a strain. And it might be too much under the shoulders as well if you're not used to this kind of an opening. You can always use a folded blanket. So you can have a folded blanket underneath the body, the torso underneath the chest. So you'll find your way. Bending knees, planting feet to start and then just settling in, checking in with the breath. Breath is always a good gauge of the body, making sure that you can breathe deeply. There's no strain, no forcing. The arms can be alongside the body. It's less of a physical sensation of stretch with arms down alongside. You might find that it's too much of a stretch with arms alongside. So just finding that perfect spot for you Legs can go long or knees can stay bent, but feet can go wide, so you're just creating that spaciousness in the body, just beginning the practice. Closing the eyes or softening your gaze as you welcome yourself to your practice. You can take deeper breaths here. Signaling the body, the mind, that it's time to begin. Maybe a cleansing breath as you breathe in through the nose. Out through the mouth. Relaxing into the earth, onto the props, really feeling supported. Scanning the body, releasing any holding, any gripping, acknowledging where there's sensation. Maybe you've got some injuries that are healing. I know I do. So notice those in this space of quiet. You can think about breathing into those spaces. That prana, that life force, that healing energy. And breathing out any tension and holding any pain that you might be carrying. And pain can be physical, emotional, mental. And releasing that as you breathe out, really using every breath. So healing. It's a gift of time, it's a gift of breath. Utilizing that all for you in this moment. Along with the in-breath, you can form an intention for this practice, breathing that in. Still releasing, letting go as you exhale. Following the in and the out of your breath. And give and take. Ebb and flow like waves of the ocean. A few more cycles like this. We'll be here in quiet and stillness, just observing, just breathing.
and begin to deepen her breath. Just preparing the body for movement. Move the fingers, move toes, you can float arms overhead, just moving in your own time. Full body stretch on the props if that feels appropriate for your body. Flex and pointing to your feet. You open and close the mouth, maybe yawning. You can rock the legs a little back and forth. Really feeling joyful in your body. Feel like home here. Floating the arms alongside the body. I like to come into gold post arms, practice arms, really opening up into the chest, all of those tight places. You can stay with long legs or it may feel better for you bending one knee than the other, let the feet plant. So it really does change the positioning of the torso. A few breaths here. See how mindfully, how slowly you can release off of the props if you're on them. They can just move off to the side. You can curl into more of a fetal position with the head supported by the arm like a pillow. Knees bent, belly soft. We'll come onto our sides with the props off of the mat. Stay on our side. So from here, you can have a support for the head. I've got my arms out, so they're perpendicular to the body. My head is supported, knees bent, similar to that fetal position. But we're going to move with the arm, move with the shoulder. So the top arm, doesn't matter which side you're on, and start to circle that arm. So drive the fingertips along the earth up overhead until they can't anymore. And then you'll either rock back onto the back body, reaching the arm out to that opposite side, or you can keep the torso and the head more stationary. So it's really up to you. Maybe there's no movement and it's just the movement of the arm. So there's all kinds of ways to approach this. If there's any tension in the hip area, you can have a block in between the knees, maybe even a blanket if you need that support there. And as we know, it's more than just physical, it's also nervous system. So. We want the body to feel truly relaxed, truly supported. So a few more circles like this with that top arm. Think about the shoulder driving the movement. It's not the hand of the clock that moves, it's the mechanism within. So that's what's driving this movement. And go slow, take time, maybe close the eyes. Again, maybe you don't want the block, especially if you're rocking back. Sometimes that can get in the way. You can circle in the opposite direction if that serves you. It might not. You can try it. Let's just say a couple more circles. And maybe you've reversed those movements in the opposite direction. And then we'll all meet back together, arm into arm, hand into hand. And then from here, you're just going to take that top hand at the wrist and then think about drawing that arm away. And you should feel that stretch. I'm going to place the support under my side of my head that feels better. You should feel that stretch. You're moving the scapula, the shoulder blades away from the spine. So you're creating that stretch, so it's a press and a release. Pressing and releasing. Just offering some tractioning of the joints. You might feel this in the wrist, you might feel this in the elbow. One more time, pressing and releasing. And then from here you can trace that bottom arm across the chest, the back of the head to the earth, and reach that top arm up to the side. So we're just going to dedicate a dedicated twist here. 
Your knee might need some support, maybe under that shoulder, maybe between the knees. Just a few breaths. Really feel, again, that support of props and of the earth. It's safe to explore this position. using your breath. Just one more breath. Take your time and draw the knees back through center, plant to the feet. And then take a full body stretch here. We situate yourself on your mat. Spread fingers, spread toes, deep breaths, cleansing breaths, maybe yawning, shake out legs. Just moving, exploring the joints. Moment here to draw the arms down alongside the body, bend one knee, bend the other. So really reaching shoulders away from ears, just creating that space so you can rock the head from side to side. One more time, just gentle rocking. Think about massaging the back of the skull into the earth. And then just rolling onto your other side. Just a turn around here. Think of that same position, arms out to the side. And again, maybe that support under the head, maybe the support under the, between the knees, rather. I'm just going to start to move that top arm and that circular position, circular direction. This side can be very different than the other. You can close the eyes, just breathe. And let the mind stay present. Permission to be here. Feeling every sensation. And again, maybe circling in the opposite direction. See if that feels appropriate for your body. more rotations. Move with the breath. Move really slowly. The movement has sped up. Those last two times. See how slowly you can move. Checking in with the rest of the body. And then Returning that top arm, top hand back together like prayer hands. And then you can take that bottom hand right at the wrist, right where the hand meets the wrist. And we're going to pull the arm away. If this feels like there's sharpness or pain. Obviously, don't do that, but it should feel good. Like, again, there's a little tractioning happening, bringing some separation, maybe a little stretch of the rotator cuff, stretch of the rhomboids. A couple more times, you're just pressing and releasing. Pressing and releasing. Again, that top arm can slide up the bottom arm, across the chest. Think about opening the chest, the back of the head to the earth or to props, and then you're reaching that top arm out to the outer side, the opposite side back into that spinal twist. A few breaths here.
Again, maybe you want some support between the legs, different, different position of the legs. Think about heavying that top shoulder down on that opposite side, maybe even gazing over that shoulder. One more breath. And take your time. You're just going to curl back into a fetal position. Whatever side that you're on is fine. Head is still supported. Belly is still soft. And see how slowly you can press up into a child's pose. Inner big toes touch. You can fan out the toes. And from here, as you release forearms to the earth, Make sure there's enough room for the head to hang heavy in their space. So the forehead is not on the ground, the head is not touching the ground. You set yourself up with forearms on the ground, and there's some room. So from here, then you can stack one fist on top of the other, and then the forehead comes to that. And then from here, you just kind of sway the head a little. It's pivoting on this little support. You're in your balasana child's pose, and there's some ability to create some movement in the neck and the head. So allowing for that stacking, and just making little gentle fists, and then just moving the head, rocking on that axis. Maybe even nodding the head a little, and shaking the head no. A couple more breaths. And then from here, palms can draw under the shoulders, pressing up to a tabletop position. Spread through the fingers, connect to the breath, couple cat cows, inhale lift the gaze with the tail. Exhale, find that rounding. One more time, inhale. And exhale to round. And keeping that rounded spine, just circling the hips clockwise or counterclockwise. And start to circle in the <clears throat> excuse me, opposite direction. back through your center, curl toes under, spread them out, walk the hands back, keep the hands on the ground. Might feel good to stay here or you can sway the hips from side to side, getting into all of the toes, creating that space. The foot, think about all those standing asanas we do, so just preparing the body for more of that. Back through center, stilling the movement, walking the hands out, untuck the toes, you can lightly tap the tops of the feet to the earth. And then from here, hands move so the fingers face the side walls. And you can step the hands out, maybe as wide as the mat, and just start to sway the torso from side to side. And again, we're warming the wrist joint for the weight bearing that we do. a little bit of movement from side to side. You can keep doing that or maybe angle the fingers so they face the rear corners of the mat. From here you can soften your elbows, maybe creating that circling again. Circle the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. 
staying here, or you can spin the hands or the fingers face the knees. This can be a lot. So if you're not prepped for this, if you're not ready for this, just stay in any of the, of the other two options I've given. And from here, a couple cat cows. And then slowly, incrementally walk the hands. So the fingers face forward once again. And I like to sit on a block for hero's pose. So you can do that. Just seated on shins for a moment. We'll call it up here. Interlace your fingers, press the forearms together and create some circles. Creating some heat in the shoulders, tall spine. Noticing which way the hands are going and then reversing that. Releasing the hands, shake out the hands. And flick the fingers if you're flicking water. And then just releasing that, just a couple of head rolls from side to side. rolls your shoulders. By couple, I mean more than two. Because <laughs> it feels so good. And one more time. Rolling through shoulders, you can breathe into the nose and out through the mouth. All that tension releasing as we make our way into a down dog. So, we plant your palms to the earth Curl the toes under. So spreading everything out as we press the mat away, just walking the dog, pedaling out through the feet. You know, we're opening up through the soles of the feet, the toes, the ankles, the calves. Shifting the weight of the body from side to side, swaying the hips. Keep pressing the mat away. Think about creating the length here. Finding stillness, see if we can just take three deep breaths here in place of stillness. And then slowly with control, release your knees back down to the earth. You can separate them as the inner big toes come together. Press the mat away, round the spine, sink the hips back to heels, you're back in your child's pose. Maybe forehead comes to those stacked hands again, or stacked fists, or maybe the forehead to the earth. Just depends on what feels appropriate for your body. Take a deep breath. Maybe one more breath. We're pressing the palms under the shoulders. We're going to come to seated on shins once again. If that doesn't feel good for you, you can stand on shins. It does not matter. We're going to warm and tone the shoulders just a little bit more. Some good shoulder work today. We're going to come eventually into a puppy pose, but I know that can be challenging for some people, so we're going to ease into that with a little bit more warm up for the shoulders. So you can interlace your thumbs, like a little bird here, and then biceps by the ears, drawing the ribs in towards the spine so we're not puffing out, but we're keeping that alignment almost like a tadasana. And we're just going to pulse the arms back for 10, keep pulsing 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then just floating arms down alongside the body. Maybe noticing a bit more heat in the shoulders and the arms. Come off of your block if you're seated. 
and then into a tabletop. So you want the hips to stay above the knees as you just walk the hands out. We're going to pulse into this as well. So wrists can go wide. Inhale. And then exhale, think about sinking the chest to the earth. Keeping the arms strong as you inhale, float back up. And exhale, release back down. So if you've got anything contraindicated here, injuries, rotator cuff impingement, recent surgeries of shoulders, this is not for you. You can come into child pose, you can come into down dog. But puppy pose might feel too pinchy for you. So if there is that pain or sharpness, don't do it. And the next time you come down, we're going to stay down. Chin or Maybe the forehead to the earth. Think about collarbone spreading and breathing. You can breathe a little bit more shallowly. Three more breaths. And then we're going to just float forward. So depending on where you were at, if you're not doing this pose with us, does not matter. We're all meeting together in space pose. So active through the legs, sensing the entire body, sensing the breath. Think about the pelvis staying glued to the earth. You can actually press it down into the earth and then just move the torso from side to side a little. Just going to initially wake up so as hip flexors can wake up the spine. Notice where else you feel this. A couple more sways of the torso from side to side. And then as you come back to your center, see how uplifted you can stay in the spine without arm strength. As you float the arms back, elbows hug into the midline, press the palms into the earth. Now you're in cobra, inhale. And engage the core, tuck the tailbone. Curl the toes under, lift hips up and back, down dog. This time, step the feet wide in your down dog. And start to walk the hands back towards your feet, soften the knees along the way. Maybe fingertips or palms to the earth. You might want to take hold of your elbow. Maybe some rocking forward and back or swaying the torso from side to side. You know, bend one knee, then the other. So you've got some options here to explore. Coming back to your center, stilling any movement, spread the toes. One more breath. Think about strength happening from the feet, through the legs, into your core, as you bend the knees and roll up through standing. Take your time here. So really using the foundational strength to create that uplifted energy in the spine. Taking some rows through shoulders. Up, back, and down. You warmed your body like I have, you can start taking off layers. What a beautiful thing in the winter. So we're going to come into some standing poses. Um, so find your two blocks and place those at the high height at the top of the mat. I'm standing kind of between the blocks. Finding that mountain pose, so you can always be about to hip distance apart. Hands to the hips, inhale. Find length, keep the heart open, and then as you exhale, keep that length as you hinge forward. Finding the blocks. Let the left foot stay and the right foot step back into pyramid pose. So the blocks want to frame that front foot. That might mean that you're changing the blocks, drawing them back. Really gluing that back heel to the earth. And then we're going to move with the breath a little. So as you inhale, just pop up on the ball of the right foot. And as you exhale, think about grounding that back heel down. If you're not feeling a stretch in that calf, well then lengthen your stance. Inhale, lifting the heel. Exhale, simply grounding the heel. And I'm still toning the front quad. That front kneecap is lifting. 
you're still toning the core, thinking about lengthening the spine out of the hips. Just moving with the breath. Maybe each time I ground the heel, I think about lengthening my stance a little bit more. Kind of always naturally moves back. There's a little more separation. One more time. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, grounding. They say that calf muscle works like a heart pump, so that's nice too. Now I'm going to do the front foot. So as you inhale, you're just lifting up the front toes. And then as you exhale, you're grounding that ball of the foot. And then inhale, lifting, you're flexing the foot. And exhale, releasing back down. So a few more breaths like that. You're really feeling that stretch of the back of the leg. Of course, not going so far that there's sharpness or pain. You can always have a softness to the knees. And I'm using the supportive blocks, but you can use chairs, you can use couches. And one more time. I'm grounding through the feet. I've slid a little too far. So finding that foundation once again, toning through the legs, toning through the core, so much so that I can release the arms back behind me. I'm pressing the palms as if I'm hugging a beach ball back behind my body. I'm keeping that beach ball energy as I rise. And again, keeping that energy like that. There's a ball of energy between the palms as you float the arms, biceps by the ears, tall spine, active through the legs. Keep a steady gaze. One more breath. Gazing forward, neck neutral, arms down, hands to the hips, and then just stepping forward back into your mountain pose. Close the eyes, check in, maybe feeling a difference in your legs. And hands to the hips, standing. Exhale the hinge forward, find the blocks. Right foot stays, left foot steps. You want space between the feet, their hip distance apart. Connecting to the breath. We're just lifting the back heel, inhaling, and grounding the back heel, exhaling. Moving with the breath. It's not just a placement. We're actively driving the back heel down. I'm thinking about lengthening through that back leg, even if there's a softness to the knee, really creating that stretching in the calf muscle. So taking advantage of this time. There's an awareness in the front leg. There's an awareness in the core. Awareness in the spine. Moving with the breath. One more time, lifting, inhaling, and then exhale, grounding. And then we're just doing the front foot. So it's that inhale, we're on the center of the heel, lifting the toes, flexing the foot. Exhale, regrounding that foot. Again, just coming through a few of those. Still feeling that back calf stretch, but I'm actually also going for that front leg stretch as well. You'll feel it wherever you feel it. So if, if you're Tighten the calf, you're gonna feel it there. If the hamstring's tight and you're lifting your tailbone slightly, maybe slightly arching the back, you're gonna feel it more in your hamstring. It depends on your body position, it depends on what you need, so you can really gauge this. So moving with the breath, inhale, lifting that front foot, exhale, releasing it back down. Let's say one more time, inhale, exhale. So establishing that firm foundation because we're gonna play with balance. So core is active, you're just light on the fingertips, arms reach back behind you, heart is open. Finishing an exhalation. And then inhale, using strength, 
using balance, floating arms up, biceps by the ears, open the heart, and breathe. One more inhalation, reaching and lengthening. And then exhale, neck is neutral, arms float down and soften through the knees as you step forward back into your mountain pose. Arms relax alongside the body. So we'll do a little standing twist here. We've got time. So the feet are about hip distance apart. You only need one block. Hands to the hips, really opening up through the chest as you inhale. And then exhale, lead with the heart once again. And then the right hand to the block, left hand to the hip, bend through that right knee, open the chest, spiral open to that left side. And then exhale, can relax that left arm to the earth. And then inhale, bending the right knee, left hand to the left shoulder, spiral and open, and then exhale, letting that arm just kind of dangle. And then inhale, reaching, maybe fingertips reach towards skyward. Feel the rotation in the side body and in the spine, not so much forcing with the shoulder. Inhale. And exhale. See where the body takes you. Again, we're not forcing anything. Maybe there's stiffness this morning. It's cold this morning. The body's going to react to that. Winter in Illinois. And the next time you release that left hand down and just bring it to the block. Make sure there's plenty of room. So you've got a long torso and you've not shortened your stance here. So if the block's too close to the feet, You've not allowed yourself that space. So inhale, bending the left knee, opening and twisting, and then exhale, relaxing that right arm down. Inhale, hand to the shoulder, expanding, and exhale, relaxing back down. Inhale, twisting. Exhale, floating, relaxing, and softening. Just a couple more times like that. Inhale, spiral open. Again, the movement happening with the rotational quality in the spine, really bending through that left knee. Feeling that in my outer hips today, that just means they're tight. So one more time, inhaling. And exhale. You've got that block in front of you, so you can use it as you step the feet out wide. I always like to align my heels with the back of my mat, that way I know I'm aligned in my body. You might not need this block. You can release palms to the earth. And just a little bit of sway. You can think about dipping one hip down, the opposite hip up. Legs stay straight and strong, maybe with micro bends. Just stretching the inner legs. Subtle stretch, subtle quality to this. Maybe bending one knee, bending the other, shifting the body from side to side. Starting to bend the right knee, walk hands, heart, and torso towards that right foot. Coming into a runner's lunge, you're framing that foot, sweeping it back into plank. So finding your core, finding length here, shifting forward. So we've kind of prepped the shoulders and the wrists for this. Take an inhalation, and then as you exhale, elbows hugging to the midline. As you exhale, lower down. Maybe the knees come down to the earth. Nice and slow with control, coming on to the belly. Baby cobras, we're doing back body core. So inhale, lift, and exhale, lower. So if you're looking for a bigger up dog, if you're looking for back bends, that comes from this space. So do the work here. Lower to the ground, 
No arm strength. Every inhalation, lift with a neutral neck. Every exhalation, release back down. Forehead can come to the earth. Again, always really powerful thing to do, powerful exercise for the strength of your spine. Especially if you're entering into an age of osteopenia, osteoporosis. You get little micro breaks in those bones and we are strong. Yogis are strong. So we're doing these subtle exercises. So one more time, inhale, lifting. Press the palms into the earth. You can flow through the knees. Curl toes under. We're just going like to land in a down dog. And play with this. Bending knees, swaying hips, sway the head, or stillness. A couple more breaths here. And releasing your knees to the earth. I'm just seated on shins just for a moment. Ships, ships, hips, hips can shift to one side. <laughs> Sweep the legs out of the cup. And then just make sure you've got a block kind of midway on the mat off to the side. We'll use that a little bit later. Bending knees, planting feet, hands to the backs of the thighs, grow the spine tall, tone through the core, rock back. So boat pose variations. Shift back more, float the shins parallel, maybe squeeze the inner ankles and inner knees together, and float the arms, and stay here, and play with floating right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg, maybe both legs, feel that compressive energy of the core. Take both arms, and then slowly making your way onto your back with all of that control. Arriving, you can hug knees into the chest. And then plant the feet, tuck the tailbone, press the palms alongside the hips, and just lift up, baby bridge. Belly soft. Really think about pressing feet, toning the hamstrings, toning the glutes, setting the knees as if they could touch in front of the toes. And one more inhalation with that engagement. And tuck the tailbone, curl the spine, ride the exhalation down, tailbone meets the mat last. A moment to be here, relax the body, and breathe. And again, you'll have your block right next to you. Know where it is, so you don't have to turn your head, gaze in the skyward, press the feet into the earth, tuck the tailbone, lift the hips, to slide that block underneath you. So it's under the sacrum, it's supporting your hips, you might need to maneuver it a little bit to find that sweet spot. And then tuck the shoulders away from the ears. Maybe close the eyes and just be here for a moment. And you can stay here. This is beautiful. You can also find your other block. I know, I should have said that before. So your other block is on, going to be on that left side. So you can extend the right leg out. And the right heel is going to ground. You can stay here. This is great. Or you can bring that block to the high height on the left side of the left leg and then open up that left leg to the left side. This is a big hip opener. Inner groin is opening. If there's pain in this pose, it's just not worth it. The low back is saying, no, then listen, but relax and breathe no matter where you're at.
and just one more breath. So you want to float the left knee back to skyward, grounding that left foot, and slide that right heel back underneath you. Let's pause for a moment in between the sides. So press feet into the earth, inhale, lift hips up, slide the block out, lower down. That can be a long time for a lot of people. So we're gonna pause in between our sides. We'll get to both sides. Knees hugged in. You can start to separate the knees out to the sides, circling them back together. Draw the knees up towards the chin, around to the sides, and circle back together. A couple more times in this direction. A couple more times in the opposite direction. And then planting the feet. We're preparing for bridge, so those hip bones in line with knees, knees in line with ankles. Tuck the tailbone, press into the feet, lift the hips up, slide that block under, settle the hips, settle the shoulders. Moving that block over to the right side. Maybe you stay here. Or lengthen that left leg out. Maybe you stay here, or you can start to open up the right leg to the right side. I always like to start at the high height. I've got some really, <sighs> some really tight hips this morning. It's okay. It's cold weather. Did a lot more sitting yesterday than normal, so I'm feeling it today. It affects the practice. Which is honoring where you're at, never forcing the body. When we can take care of the body on one day, the next day it will feel more open. Each day it's like cumulative effects. That's why it's so important to do a daily practice, really setting yourself up for, for true health, true well being. One more breath. So at home in my normal practice, not in the span of an hour period of time, I would probably be here longer. This is my tighter side this morning for whatever reason. I would probably hang out here for a few more breaths, um, maybe another minute before coming out. But in the interest of time, the fact that it's a lead class, keeping things a little bit more symmetrical from side to side. So you're just going to flip that right knee up, ground both feet, rebend the left knee, plant both feet. Prepare yourself to lift hips up and slide the block out, tuck the tailbone and ride the breath down as you exhale. Then arms out to goalpost arms, cactus arms, inner knees come together as the feet inch out to the outer edges of the mat, inhale. And then exhale, knees over to the right, gaze over to the left. And if you need support, if there's any tension, pinching, you can always support under the right knee with a prop. We're just gonna be here a few breaths. And then inhaling the knees back through center, let them touch, and then exhale knees over to the left, gazing over the right shoulder. There's always a little bit more you can let go of, so notice, notice where you're gripping or just holding. So you can get to a point where you can let go just for a breath. And 
rocking the head, the neck back through center, inhaling knees back through center, then let them come together, softening, resting against one another. Separate the knees, heel to toe, the feet close together. Hug the knees into the chest. You might be here and rocking from side to side, or you may be going into your happy baby, reaching for pinky toe edges of feet, feet skyward, deep bend in the knees. Just a couple more breaths, exploring this final stretch before our final resting pose. And then you can send the legs long, feet wide. Maybe there's support under the knees. You can tuck shoulders down away from ears. Feel spacious in the butt. And rock the head a little from side to side, releasing tension in the neck and shoulders. Closing the eyes. And resting. Begin to deepen your breath. We're awakening the body with movement. Starting with fingers, toes, ankles, wrists, bending elbows. And open and close the mouth as you stretch your arms. Overhead, full body stretch, perhaps into a yawn or a deeper breath. Bending one knee, and then the other, feet planting. Staying mindful, slow in the movements. Roll into either side, curling into a fetal position. The head is supported by the arm, belly soft. Rolling the chest and the belly more towards the earth, using the strength of your arms as you press up to seated. Just a comfortable cross-legged seated position. Rooting down through sit bones. 
growing the spine tall, opening your heart. Bring hands to your heart center. Just recalling the intention that you set for your practice. And take that with you into the rest of your day or something new, something that you need now. Something that will keep you whole and connected to yourself. Namaste. Thank you everyone for joining. Hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. And I'll see you next time.